Welcome to Electra Online. Next, let's take a look at our elliptical galaxies. And also among the elliptical galaxies, we have a special type of elliptical galaxy that's kind of a cross between elliptical and spiral galaxies. They're called lenticular galaxies, so we'll touch upon that as well. But elliptical galaxies are definitely the most common galaxy in our universe. Now, remember that in the previous video, we stated that 72% of all galaxies observed are spiral galaxies, but spiral galaxies generally are very large. Elliptical galaxies can run the gamut from very tiny to extremely in enormous in size. Now, when we talk about tiny, we talk about only having a million or a few million stars. Now you say, well, a million stars, that's not small. Yes, a million stars is a lot of stars, but as far as the galaxy is concerned, it is very, very tiny. And those galaxies are such that you can look right through them. You don't have that central bulge that is just a glow of light. It almost looks like an open cluster of stars. What makes a difference between an open cluster of stars and the small elliptical galaxies that the size of them are much larger. So small elliptical galaxies, well, they can be the size of uh, a thousand light years across, where clusters tend to only be as far as five or 10 or 15 light years across. So there's a big difference between clusters in galaxies and actually small elliptical galaxies that are not, don't have that many stars. But the big ones, because you can have galaxies that are absolutely enormous in size, the big ones can be as much as 10 trillion stars in size. Now compare that to our own Milky Way galaxy, which only has about 250, only 250 billion stars, that would be about 40 times as many. So one galaxy that we know of, it's called M87, is 40 times the size in mass of the Milky Way galaxy because it's estimated to have about 10 trillion stars in it. Also, some of the really big elliptical galaxies also contain very big black holes at the center. The one that's at the center of M87 is estimated to be about three and a half or four billion solar masses in size. So you'll see that as well. So they don't become spirals, and that's one thing that's always being asked. Do elliptical galaxies become spirals, or do spiral galaxies become ellipticals? And the answer is no especially in the direction from elliptical to spiral. The reason is that elliptical galaxies rotate very, very slowly, and elliptical galaxies rotate relatively fast. And so because of the conservation of angular momentum, you couldn't have a galaxy that is rotating very slowly and somehow begins to rotate faster. That's not going to happen. So they're definitely very distinct galaxies, and one doesn't become the other. So one's an elliptical galaxy, always an elliptical galaxy. Now, however, because of galaxy collisions, you have some very interesting galaxies. So here we have NGC 1516. Let me move it over just a little bit. So am I reading that right? No, it's 1316, NGC 1316. Now that's an elliptical galaxy, but it has all those dark regions in there. Those are nebulas that are not uh, glowing on, in and of their own, so they're dark nebulas. So where would they come from? Because elliptical galaxies typically do not have a lot of interstellar matter. So the reason that some elliptical galaxies do have that interstellar matter that would then be used to make new stars, which is very rare in elliptical galaxies, is because sometimes other galaxies collide with them who contain all those masses of gas and dust, which then intermingles with the existing elliptical galaxy. Typically, most have very, inter, very little interstellar matter, and therefore star formation is virtually non-existent in elliptical galaxies. So they typically, and I guess I need a Y in there, there we go, typically only old K and M type stars will exist in old elliptical galaxies. That means a lot of population two stars who have very little heavy metals. The color, therefore, tends to be orangey, reddish in color for most of the galaxy because essentially an elliptical galaxy looks just like the core or the, or the central bulge of a, of a spiral galaxy. And so therefore we have that typical yellowish, orangish, reddish color within that, uh, that galaxy. Now the shapes of elliptical galaxies can vary anywhere from being spherical in, in shape to being cigar-like in shape or very elongated. So we attribute a, a notification to that where we say an E0 is an elliptical that is spherical in shape and an E7 is an elliptical galaxy that's more cigar-like in shape and then you have all the different shapes in between. 
Now notice that galaxies can be oriented and rotated in all kinds of different ways. So an E7 galaxy could also look like an E0 galaxy when you're looking at it right head on like this. So if you have a, a cigar shaped galaxy and you're looking at it like this, it will appear like it's an E0 galaxy when it's actually a cigar shaped galaxy. So the shape determination of elliptical galaxies is simply the way it looks from where we are. It may not be the actual shape of the galaxy. Keep that always in mind. So now going to lenticular galaxies, we give them designations S0 or SB0. SB if the central region looks more like a bar, S0 when the central region looks more like a spherical shape. So typically lenticular galaxies have this spherical, spherical bulge or central bulge and then around it we have something that kind of looks like spiral arms but it doesn't have any specific definition. You cannot tell if there's any arms there but it looks like a disk and that this will typically also contain a little bit more of the, of the uh, gas and dust. It'll have nebulas and potentially star formation in there. So it looks a little bit like the, the disk region of a elliptical galaxy. But since you cannot see any of the shapes of the spiral arms, we call that a special category. We call that a lenticular galaxy. So it's essentially a, sh a cross between an elliptical galaxy that looks spherical with some material around it that forms a thin disk around it that looks like spiral arms but you can't see the definition of spiral arms. So that is a special case of an elliptical galaxy and when you look at the fork, the tuning fork diagram that has a stem and the two forks like this, notice that the elliptical galaxies are placed right here, the spiral galaxies are placed here, the barred spiral and the regular spiral and then here at the junction of the of the uh, tuning fork, that's where we place the lenticular galaxies because it's kind of a, a hybrid between the elliptical galaxies and the spiral galaxies. So here you have kind of a, a little overview of what the elliptical galaxies are all about. And notice there is a big distinction between the two and one does not become the other. And that is the way it is for the elliptical galaxies. So how do you know when you're looking at a round elliptical galaxy that it's round and not no way of knowing. Yeah, it just sits there. It looks a little, It looks, you know, spherical in shape, and you have no way of knowing. So you can't look at it say, well, since it looks denser or brighter or anything. No way to tell. And you can't wait for it to turn around because that may take many millions of years. So yeah, just don't know. It just appears that way to us. But then someone else look at it. If there are some intelligent beings, a uh, different corner of the, of the universe and they're looking at it from a different perspective, then yes, they could see it differently. Yeah.